Finally, after two years of refusing to follow any health guidelines or get vaccinated, my dad got COVID. It was an absolute certainty, but he did have a few things going for him. He never socializes with anyone, uh, but me and occasionally my sister. Most of what he eats now is the fruits and vegetables from his massive garden in his backyard. He hasn't been to a doctor in at least a decade, both because he doesn't trust them and because he hasn't had any health problems. And he looks as good as most 60-year-olds, despite being 72. So it might have been a bit foolish, but I was never worried about what might happen to him. That man survived spending half of his adult life being addicted to booze and cigarettes before turning himself into a monk so I guessed he would land on the good side of the mortality rate. And I was right. COVID hasn't been much of a problem for him. His getting COVID, however, is much more a problem for the rest of the world. Ever since I confronted him about the horrible things on his conspiracy website, he's honestly been half decent about not posting there anymore. It's still my ultimate goal to get him to wipe that abomination off the face of the internet. But I asked him to not post to it anymore, and even though he conveniently chooses when to forget about that, the website has been nowhere near the center of his life like it's been for decades. Until getting COVID sent him on a crusade to spread every piece of disinformation about the pandemic and the vaccines that he could find. I discovered that the new centerpiece on his website is this massive list of evidence that everyone is lying about COVID and the vaccine is going to kill millions of us in the next... 10 years. But when I called him to ask what his deal was, he revealed to me two caveats that made the situation kind of wild. A few months ago, I talked about how debunking some of my dad's conspiracy nonsense led to him telling me that he was being more careful about his sources. It turns out that he was serious about that. Every single point on his list uses some kind of government or academic source as the basis for the theory. That is not to say that the theories are true. They are complete nonsense. Every single one is an obvious misinterpretation of the source out of overconfident ignorance and sensational fear. But he told me that while he was doing his research, he always heard my voice in the back of his head nagging him about how there was no real data backing up what he wanted to say. And if there was no official source that he or someone else could jury rig into a Frankenstein assembled pseudo intellectual fever dream, he wouldn't use it. It's a very, very low bar, but there's actually a lot of COVID paranoia that doesn't clear it. COVID being a hoax, COVID being a bioweapon made of snake venom, the vaccine putting microchips in our bodies or altering our DNA, none of that made the cut. And what's extremely useful about it on my end is that everything is easily debunkable. I mean, it still takes more time than any one human life can tolerate, but debunking one is just a matter of showing how the theory is misinterpreting the data that it's citing. I know that the debunking is endless, and it doesn't change anybody's mind, and it's frustrating that he'll never take anything down even after he admits that it's debunked. But this seems like evidence that it might have some kind of long-term effect. At least in my dad. At least it's reined him in enough to keep him away from some of the worst crazy. As for the rest of the very worst crazy, that was reined in by an internationally known, multiple section long Wikipedia article having washed up conspiracist pseudo celebrity. I've mentioned that my dad has connections to the conspiracist world's big leagues. That's because my dad's biggest contact is James Fetzer. He's no Alex Jones, though he did have his career destroyed by an Alex Jones style defamation lawsuit, but he has been a real player on the scene for a long time. And my dad actually wrote for him, and like, organized conferences with him, and things like that for something close to a decade. I thought that they were basically done after Fetzer's lawsuit, but my dad told me that he ran the entire list past Fetzer for his input, and he gave it. This is where I think it's helpful to understand my dad's and Fetzer's brand of conspiracism as a kind of pseudo-intellectual posturing. They pervert everything about the language of academia to dress up insane and hateful beliefs as professional scholarship, giving themselves an excuse to feel aggrieved when they aren't taken seriously by the academics they despise. That's how and why Fetzer and my dad are Holocaust deniers, but they don't think of themselves as, and don't actually want other people to think that they are, anti-Semitic bigots. So when my dad sent him a draft of the COVID disinformation list that blamed an evil Jewish cabal for a massive plot to depopulate the planet, 
Fetzer told him to cut it out. I can't really believe this, but it's thanks to James Fetzer's personal interference that my dad's disinformation campaign went from anti-Semitic mass murder theories to something closer to, like, a story of corporate greed and deception? It's still a delusional fantasy, but at least it's got a better villain. Whether this is all a good thing or just weird... I'm not really sure. I mean, it's a bad thing. All of this is a bad thing. But it gave me this empirical sense that something has worked. This project of his that normally would have been horrible and dangerous ended up just being frustrating and dangerous. And I want to think that it's because of my attempts to draw him back to a reality where his relationships with his kids matter more than his delusions of fighting an evil enemy. So a few months ago, I tabled an essay that I was working on that was going to be my big splash, explaining everything that I've learned, everything that I've done with my dad, and how it might be able to work for other people. And I tabled it because of how it felt like things weren't working. But now, I think I might be ready to do it again. 